Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your host of Nova Science Now. A century ago, Percival Lowell gazed up at Mars and imagined a network of canals built by civilized Martians. Of course, he was mistaken. That kind of Martian life was just Lowell's fantasy. But the search for real life on Mars is still going strong, even though now we'd be happy to find microbes or even just organic molecules. Just recently, a new probe landed on Mars, and this one had the best chance yet of discovering whether Mars could have ever supported life. This is the thrill of space exploration for me. Who knows where it can lead? I mean, it's that unknown. It's that mysteries may be solved, new mysteries created. It's, it's what keeps us going. This is why we do it. Peter Smith has spent 15 years trying to get to one place. It just so happens to be a couple of hundred million miles away. Sending a mission to Mars is somewhat like hitting a golf ball across the solar system. We'll see if we got our hole in one. Smith is in charge of Phoenix, the NASA spacecraft that's been making headlines this summer with its amazing findings on the planet Mars. I got to go behind the scenes to see firsthand why everyone's getting so excited. It turns out there's a profound reason. Well, how many times have you looked up in the sky and wondered, are we alone in the universe? But hold on. Are we talking Martians? If Hollywood's got it right, we should be finding monsters on Mars. Or maybe it's alien invaders. Our Martian friend is a carbon-based life form. Astrobiologists haven't given up on those carbon-based life forms, but they're looking for something considerably smaller. Microbes, tiny single-celled organisms. Phoenix's destination? The northern polar region of Mars. For a long time, we've known it has an ice cap, made primarily of frozen carbon dioxide, dry ice. But in 2002, we looked deeper. An orbiter called Mars Odyssey detected elements beneath the surface. The one marked blue was big news. It's hydrogen. That's right, the H in H2O. Water is one of the key ingredients for life. But can Phoenix find it on the planet's surface? Phoenix is going down to investigate. This is the site we've chosen. The Mars equivalent of northern Alaska. That's where Phoenix is landing. Less than 10 months after liftoff. Four, three, two, one, mark. We have now entered the atmosphere and are starting to slow down. For engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, this is it. Constant loss of phase detected. Altitude 27 meters, 20 meters, 50 meters, standing back for touchdown. Touchdown signal detected. Landing in its sequence initiated. A flawless soft landing. Welcome to planet Mars. Time to get to work. This is our downlink room. Mm -hmm. The data is piped to this facility right here, and it comes up on this screen. That's where we. So this see is the first. first time it's ever seen by anybody. Is yes. on the screen. That's, That's cool. That's great. So if anything was crawling around, you'd all would see it. <laughs> here and now. <laughs> it's up to the team members here at the University of Arizona to tell Phoenix what to do. He's ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Rick McCloskey is one of them. Looky here. It's an exact replica of Phoenix, but is it more than a museum piece? What oh, is, it's much what do you more. What do with it? Much more than a museum piece. There we go. It allows us to test any sequence, any commands that we send to Phoenix on Mars. The experiments they've got in store for the real lander can be tested here first. If we make the decision not to keep this scoop, then we can dump it. Of course, Phoenix is equipped with a stereoscopic imager, a weather station, and to cap it all off, a robotic shovel. On Mars, the lander is sitting in a desert of dirt. But beneath the dirt, 
there should be a vast ice field. Is it water? Did it ever melt so it could support life? Phoenix's goal, take a look and see if the water's really there and to assess habitability. That is, in the past, was the planet able to support life and did it? To find out, Phoenix gets digging. In one of its first trenches, it reveals light nuggets beneath the dirt, exposing them to the heat of the sun. After four days, lo and behold, the chunks disappear. They vaporized into the thin, dry Martian atmosphere. The only explanation? This material we think is ice. Not just any ice, water ice. For the first time, we touch water on another planet. This is an enormous step in the search for extraterrestrial life. But microbes need more than water to survive. Phoenix will be combing the soil for nutrients. Carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. The chemical cocktail that is crucial to life as we know it. On board are two labs, one that wets samples and another that cooks them to distinguish different chemicals. Pretty cool contraption. You want one? You just have to know where to shop. You can find something pretty similar and a lot cheaper at your local gardening store. I don't think it's How about here. a sheet metal warthog? No. Xenias? Xenias? No, not Xenias. When it comes to the red planet, Sam Canavis has a green thumb. So you work on Mars and you drag me to a gardening center. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> what we're looking for is uh, exactly what we're going to do with Phoenix on Mars. Exactly what gardeners do. Gardeners. Gardeners, they water their plants, they prune the flowers. Yeah. So there's no plants or flowers on Mars. If you were going to your lawn care store, you might want to know how good your soil was, how well it would support the grass. Exactly the same thing we're looking for in the Martian soil. Soil test strips. Soil testing, that's it. I think we found it. By looking at the soil, you can tell its ability to support life. Well, let's see it. According to Canavis, the deserts outside of Tucson have a lot to tell us about Mars. But isn't there a little problem? Like, it's 110 degrees outside right now. And last I checked on Mars, it was 100 degrees below zero. Uh, so what do you mean this is like Mars? It's like in the fact that it's a desert, and, and uh, you can have cold deserts and hot deserts. Mars is the cold kind of desert. Phoenix's postcards home are visions of the planet's north never before glimpsed. It looks bleak. How could microbes survive in a place this harsh? So this is a riverbed. To find out. Canavis has brought me to a naturally formed gully. Is this a realm that could possibly sustain any life? Its chemistry will tell. Is it like the pregnancy test where there's a plus sign very, and a very minus similar, sign? Very similar, very <laughs> similar, and, and in some ways it's an analog to what we're doing on Mars. On Mars we're using sensors that are electronic that tell us what's there. This uses color to tell us what's there. Ship it in there for 10 seconds. Now we're going to look here and see there is some phosphorus here. This soil is very low in nitrogen and high in potassium. So the tests reveal that it's got phosphorus and potassium, nutrients that tiny microbes love. Plus, there's its pH, how acidic the soil is. Okay, so this tells you that if you've got these readings on Mars, that's within the range of microbes that exist here on Earth. Even in the harshest environments in the world, from Death Valley to Antarctica, you get the same incredible results, the nutrients for life. Any desert we go to, we look hard enough and we all of a sudden realize there's life there. You look close enough and you find organisms that thrive in, in this environment. Will Phoenix find the same kinds of nutrients on Mars? It's time to put Martian soil to the test. What can you tell now? The experiment is progressing as expected, but we don't have the scientific results of it yet. This is going to dribble on and on and on For the and next on. four hours. Yeah. Hearing from Mars takes time. Every message must be relayed via satellites orbiting the planet. They cross paths with Phoenix only a few times a day. So the news just trickles in. Initial indications say that we have generated as much data as we would expect it to, which means the experiments are going well. Just waiting. It's, that part was agony. Every second was an hour. <laughs> it was definitely the longest hour of my life. <laughs> I'll wait till it's all down to look at it. The stakes are high. There are a lot of things that can go wrong between Earth and the measurement on Mars. Uh, lots of things. 
a lot of us have worked on this for a decade or more. A decade we're, we're of fruition, ten, ten, yeah. Ten years of work. To finally touch Mars. <laughs> ten years. Then. Oh, All right, here we go. <gasps> there it is. Oh, God. <laughs> more, it's coming, it's coming. The first newsflash is that pH reading. It's all down to look at it. If it's extreme, that would be toxic to life. I want a number from zero to 12, okay? <laughs> the surprise is... It's basic. It's basic. It's mild. A reading between eight and nine. <laughs> and the news just gets better. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> oh, that is gorgeous. Magnesium and chloride. Sodium and potassium at levels similar to what we got in the desert. The Phoenix mission has established that this Martian soil isn't just nutritious enough for microbes, it could actually sustain plant life. I think we're building a case for a habitable zone. What we're seeing is there's a rich mixture of nutrients. That we could actually come to good scientific conclusions from this data and release them to the public and the world. It's almost like a dream come true.